The placement of a lumbar epidural catheter is performed to facilitate the induction of anesthesia and analgesia. This video presents the relevant anatomy and placement technique of an epidural catheter. Placement of a catheter in the lumbar epidural space allows one to administer analgesic and local anesthetic agents to a series of dorsal and ventral nerve roots that exit the spinal cord and traverse the epidural space, thereby providing anesthesia or analgesia to specific nerve root distributions. Sterile technique is very important for this procedure. Don a mask, head covering, and sterile gloves. Adhere to the policy of your institution regarding the use of a full sterile gown. The patient and anyone else in the room should also wear a head covering and mask. Open the sterile epidural kit and organize the contents so that you can readily find and use the equipment as needed. Use the filter needle to draw up the medications. Apply the antiseptic skin cleanser in a back and forth motion for approximately 30 seconds. Allow the solution to air dry for at least 30 seconds. Place the sterile drape over the patient's back so that the opening provides access to the planned site of catheter placement. The epidural catheter should be placed at a level that will provide anesthesia or analgesia for the particular procedure or for control of labor pain. Use the infiltration and finder needle to infiltrate the skin and superficial tissue with 1% or 2% lidocaine to maximize patient comfort. You can also use this needle to identify the approximate depth of ligaments and bone. With the stylet in place, insert the epidural needle through the same entry point that you used with the finder needle. The purpose of the stylet is to prevent the tip of the epidural needle from becoming obstructed by patient tissue. One technique involves holding the epidural needle with the bevel facing up, using both hands, with the thumbs and index fingers holding each side of the hub. Advance the needle to pass through the supraspinous ligament and into the interspinous ligament, which in most patients is at a depth of approximately 2 to 4 centimeters. Next, remove the stylet from the epidural needle and attach the loss of resistance syringe, which should contain no more than 2 to 3 milliliters of either air or saline. Before you advance the needle further, make sure that resistance is present by gently tapping the plunger of the syringe. The plunger should not advance. Next, slowly advance the epidural needle in small increments of 2 to 3 millimeters at a time. After each advancement, check for the presence or absence of resistance by gently tapping the plunger with one hand, making sure to keep the epidural needle stable with the other hand. You will know you have entered the epidural space when there is loss of resistance, as indicated by a smooth collapse of the plunger into the syringe. Once you feel this loss of resistance, the epidural catheter can be placed. First, refer to the markings on the needle to note the depth at which the needle has entered the epidural space. For example, if you insert a 9 cm epidural needle and 4 cm of the needle remains outside the patient's skin, the distance from the skin to the epidural space is 5 cm. Note that longer epidural needles are available for use in obese patients. Gently pass the epidural catheter through the epidural needle to a depth that is at least 5 cm past the tip of the epidural needle. Do not withdraw the catheter through the epidural needle, which would increase the risk of shearing or dislodging the catheter. Withdraw the epidural needle over the catheter, being careful not to dislodge the catheter. Then slowly withdraw the catheter, leaving 3 to 5 cm of the catheter in the epidural space. For example, if the loss of resistance occurs at 5 cm, the catheter should be taped at the markings between 8 and 10 cm, attach the hub to the distal end of the catheter, which stabilizes it and allows syringes to be attached. Make sure that the catheter has not entered either the intrathecal or the intravascular space. This check involves two steps. First, aspirate the catheter with a syringe and look for blood or CSF. The absence of blood or CSF is a good indicator of correct placement, but it does not rule out intrathecal or intravascular placement. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support us to learn more. Thank you.